I am 45 years and I find it hard to stay with a man because I love to be in control. I love to command. In the gay world, they are both men. Anybody can choose to say, okay, maybe this one, I want to be the man. Anybody can choose. But when is a man and is a woman, men are supposed to take the man to the other head. No matter the kind of uh, money a woman has, God have already said it and you cannot unsee what God has said. He said men are going to be the head and women are going to be the tail. So if you're not ready to come down for a man, then I don't think you're ready for marriage. Being an alpha female can be a curse because that name alpha female came from somewhere. You know, eh? when we have a bad habit, we just have a way of looking for a sweet name to coin that habit. You know, English word actually make us contradict a lot of things in our life. Hi guys, welcome back to Moment with Blessing CEO. I hope the break wasn't that long because I needed to just, you know, catch a little rest. I missed you guys. Did you miss me? I miss you guys. Welcome back. I hope you're seated right in front of your screen. So if this is the first time you are coming on the show, trust me, it's a juicy show, undiluted, very educative. Pay attention. And the beautiful thing about the show is the fact that you can always call in to air your opinion. So first of all, we're going to start by reading out the stories because people get to send us different kind of stories. Then we sit down and we analyze them. Your opinions are very important to us. So let me quickly read the story before we start. So here's a beautiful lady that sent us a message. She said, I'm an alpha female, so I've been in different kind of relationships. I am 45 years and I find it hard to stay with a man because I love to be in control. I love to command. I love to be the head. So many men use me, collect my money and run. Blessing see you. I have watched you for years. Why are you guys always calling me? And I admire your strength. You are an alpha female too. How do you handle it? Do you have a relationship? I'm getting frustrated. Financially, I am okay, but I need a man to love me and I want to take charge. As a relationship expert, how do you keep a man and still take charge? The question is really, really deep, but I know that you're very insightful to answer. Blessing, I need a man. I'm getting old. I need to start giving better children, but the problem is I want to take charge. Tell me how to go about this. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to quickly summarize the story for you guys. A lady says she's 45 years old, but she's been into different relationships, but it's not been working because she's, she's an alpha female. She likes to take charge. She always wants to be in control. She always wants to be the alpha female. But you know, sometimes I need to break this down before we start to get the calls. You know, English word actually make us contradict a lot of things in our life. First of all, what's the meaning of an alpha female? I think a lot of women are beginning to use that word to coin their masculinity. You know, in every woman, we have this masculine gender. And in some men, we have this feminine gender. There are some women that are masculine. Masculine does not mean your physical attribute that you have to look like a man. Masculine simply means there are some people as young women like us. Me, I also call myself an alpha female. Who is an alpha female? You have been built right from childhood to carry responsibilities, things that men are supposed to do. You've been providing for your family. There are some young girls that started from 16, 15, 11 years to start to work for their family. So you have taken that position as a man. So it is very hard. Even me that is talking to you sit out here. That's the, one of the disadvantages I have in my relationship. Because sometimes when I talk, my man will tell me, I am not your client. I can't even have an argument or a conversation. Everything is a fight. Everything is a quarrel. Everything is over. Sabi, you want to show me your relationship expert. So I had to now consciously go back to my drawing board and be like, okay, is it my voice? Is there something I'm saying wrong? I had to ask most of my friends. They said, yes, so that I'm authoritative. That's what people say. I talk with so much command. Sometimes I might not mean to command the person. Instead of me to say, please, can I have your phone? I could just say, get me that phone. Some people say it's rude, but so it was when it started affecting my relationship. I had to start asking questions. I had to start to adjust. So I'm going to say to you that beautiful man, I think you are, you have a little bit of masculinity inside of you when you say you want to take charge. No, you are a woman. No matter the kind of money a woman has, God has already said it. And you cannot 
on say what God has said. He said, men are going to be the head and women are going to be the tail. So if you're not ready to come down for a man, then I don't think you're ready for marriage. That's why we're still single. <laughs> Because we're ready to come down for a man yet. Because if you must come down for a man, you have to lower yourself. He has to head you. And that's the reason why when you're choosing a partner, you will choose your head. You know, when women, women come sometimes and they want to come and start complaining about my boyfriend, my boyfriend, you chose him. You saw all the characters and you decided to say, okay, I want to stay with this man. So I'm going to talk to a lot of women who have this masculine, they call it alpha female. You know, some call it strong women. You know, they've given it different, various kind of name. No, alpha female is a trauma. I'm going to tell you that. It's a childhood trauma. Even me sitting down here, I still have trauma issues. It's just that as I began to grow, began to read, I have learned how to deal with my trauma issues. Trauma issues could come from anywhere. It could be from provision. Some of you did not have father figures. That's the truth. Some of you had fathers, but they were never there. Some of you have daddy issues. Some young girls were raped. So you have been aggressive. There are some girls that are tomboys. Like growing up, I used to love sport a lot. I love basketball. I love football. In fact, I won more than seven World Cup, 100 meter straight girls. I was a tomboy. So my mom said that I was turning into something else. I like to stay around boys. I love to wear sneakers. I'll be bouncing. <laughs> she had to switch me automatically. Maybe I would have probably been a stud by now, you know, dressing with a so we have that masculinity inside of us, but we need to be able to be conscious to, you know, reduce, especially when we see the men that we love, right? And masculine women are very, very, how do I put it? They scare men away. We are the women that they say, our I don't see. <laughs> so if you want to get married, it's something my father used to say, even if you know road, you could like say you know no road. Just like when you're driving with a man and he says, oh, baby, do you know any hotel around this place? I don't know. <laughs> don't you ever dare tell him this. Well, you not know because you go there explain. Once you tell him, oh, there's one hotel here. I don't know. And you're in this town. Ah, do I even go out? Where do I go to? I don't know. You push me scouting with Google. Yes, because in this world called Africa, we did not, no matter how we want to say it, we are not exposed even people that are well-traveled, they still come to Nigeria and still bring back that Nigerian mentality. Yes. I don't know whether the men used to switch. When they go abroad, you see them acting sensibly. But when they come to Nigeria, they bring that Nigerian mentality back to Nigeria. So the truth about it is, I'm going to say it to every woman who is an alpha female, right? That word alpha is actually a trauma. We just hide under that word alpha, to feel powerful. This is the reality I'm telling you. I am a victim. I'm not even saying you as a person. Me sitting down here, I'm also a victim of an alpha female. I can't remember when last a man can tell me, wear this. I'll tell you for what. And can't you just be romantic? Can't you just, can't you just be feminine? Even my voice sometimes, when I talk, I talk like a man. I like to order. You can actually call a guy, probably it's 11 o'clock, it's 12 o'clock, I've not seen my man, he's not back. I could just go, hi baby, are you okay? I'll be like, hello, where are you? Eh? Motor jam you for road. You'll be like, oh my God, can't you just be? <laughs> so I understand where you're coming from. So I'm going to advise you before we start to get the calls that I think you need to go back to the drawing board. Sometimes it starts from your childhood. Carrying responsibility, I know, is the major thing that makes a lot of women masculine. When you start doing those things that men can do, I know that actually when you start making money for yourself, that's what I realized. When I started making money for myself, I realized that mm, I don't need men. Yes, that's what I felt. But at the long run, when you start making money, you understand that it's not about money. It's about companionship because even Adam had everything in the Garden of Eden. And God still saw that he was lonely. Adam was not lacking anything. So I think it's not about money for women because no matter how much you have, now I think I have made, I've not made enough money do, but I think I'm comfortable enough. But right now you still need that company. You need someone to talk to. In fact, there was this guy I dated and I was too bossy to the point that each time I'm talking, he'll be looking at me. And when I'm done talking, he'll tell me, okay. And I'll tell him, you don't have anything to say? He said, no. I'll say, why? He said, I don't want an argument. I'll tell him I will not argue. He said, no, I don't even want to quarrel. Ah, 
So I'm a nag now. He said, now, you're about to start. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think uh, while you were sending the story, you were actually writing a little chapter of my life. So I think I had to go back to the drawing board. I had to start learning how to talk like a woman. Be feminine, yes. Because when you take all this responsibility, you're taking care of momsy, popsy, training everybody in school, you have a money of your own, you've just become, subconsciously become a man. Yes. So you as a person, as a woman, need to consciously go back to the drawing board and be able to say, yes, I'm doing the things that men can do, but I am still a woman. I still have to come down. It's like if you're president or you're a governor or whatever position you're in or you are the director of a bank, that is who you are in the office. As soon as you're leaving the office, you're a daddy, you're a mom, you're an uncle, you're an auntie, you're a brother. So I think that is where a lot of us make that mistake. We don't know where to drop that bossy look. There's nothing like um, ogre in your house. No, I still wash my children's clothes. I still do my kids' laundry. I still carry my kids to school. So I don't, I'm not a boss. My kids do not see me as blessing see you. They call me mommy. So when it's in a relationship, I wonder why we always want to bring that our bossy nature. It's supposed to be about love. In fact, people who love us are very few. So not everybody is supposed to even see that sweet part of you. So a man dating you should be privileged to see that sweet part of you. Like me, people see me like one weary, controversial, they get a crease. But in real life, I'm just a very cool-headed person. I had to learn it. I didn't used to be cool-headed. Now, when people come close to me, they're like, ah, she's not that the way she looks like on the social media. And I tell people that is my alter ego. You know, once they say camera, action, and that is it. So I'm going to tell this beautiful woman to go back to the drawing board, calm down, forget the amount of money in your bank account and how well you're doing. Those things are just material things. When you see a man... Calm down, be polite. Me personally, what I get to do is sometimes I even deny. Some people see me in real life. Some of them pretend not to know me. Some of them really do not know me because they are people that are not so, you know, conversant with the media. So instead of me to tell you my name is Blessing, I'll tell you my name is Inkiru. So it's over time. There was a guy I dated for three months. He was still trying to figure me out. Your face look familiar. I refuse to call blessings to you because I don't know if the blessings to you is coming with a blessing or it's coming with drama. Because once they hear blessings to you, they're like, oh my God, the blessings to you we know. So I had to switch my name in real life to Ikiruka. <laughs> That's my name. <laughs> Are you blessed to see you? No. And probably over time, the person gets to know you and gets to find out and be like, oh, you're, you're kind of a different personality. So I think right now as a woman, you have to now make that conscious effort being an alpha female can be, can be a curse because that name, alpha female, came from somewhere. You know, eh? when we have a bad habit, we just have a way of looking for a sweet name to coin that habit. Things like, love me the way I am. It's how God created me. That's a very popular, nonsensical word a lot of people use in relationship. It's the way I am. I have anger issues. That is how God created me. Love me the way I am. It's a lie. You were created like a baby. Everything you are today and will become tomorrow are the things that you learn and you can unlearn them and relearn them. That's the honest truth. So if you see any woman or anyone that says this is who I am, it's simply they don't want to change. They are narcissists. They want to be giving you bad things to be swallowing. But if I, give, if I repeat the same thing to you and tell you that is who I am, you will say I have a bad attitude. No. Nobody was born like that is who I am. That is how God, God did not create you to be stupid. God did not create you with anger issues. How come the anger issues only come in your relationship? But when you go to the office, you used to respect your boss. Once she, even you, many of you men that are working with women, when your madam call you, you'll be running like goats, adjusting your tie and your jacket. Why don't you go there and go and tell her you have anger issues? So, so long as you have different ways that you act to different people, it simply means you are intentional. It's except you carry these anger issues everywhere you go. When you go to church, you slap your pastor. When you go to work, you slap your madam. We know that, okay, this one you are possessed. But if, if there's a particular place that this anger issue comes at, especially when it comes to your loved ones, your children, your mother, that means you're a sick person. You can unlearn and relearn it. So these are words that, you know, people have coined to be able to hide their bad habits. The truth about it is I believe that when you're in a relationship and in a marriage, 
the essence of being in a relationship simply means I want to know you. And I feel you should be privileged if you have an outspoken man. The biggest challenge I myself have as a person is because I always meet men that don't talk. I like men that are outspoken. Sometimes I'll ask, what am I doing wrong? Nothing. No. I, I, I always pay for an outspoken man because it's only when you correct me. Sometimes I even have to go back to the drawing board, you know, read a lot, watch myself. I'm a masculine person. That's the truth. Life may be masculine. I used to be a crybaby when I got married initially. I used to be someone that if you tell me, oh, you're crazy, I'll start crying. I'll start feeling crazy. I used to be a baby. But when life gave me ta 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 and I braced up. Actually, when I came, I became very hostile and very aggressive when I came to the internet. And everybody was mad on the internet. You would just post something. Someone would just write something. You would be like, what is this? They were about to send me to depression. I said, okay, it stood for that. But that is for the media. Me, Okoro Blessing in real life. If I see trouble, I run. I avoid wahala. I, I stop and I say sorry. There was a day I was driving mistakenly. I poured someone water. I had to pack to come down. The man was telling me it's fine. When he even saw me, he was like, oh, blessing, see you. I, this. And I, told him, I don't even mind. He said, don't worry. You did, I didn't know. It wasn't intentional. So the man was shocked that I could come down to say sorry. I had to do that now. Let's not look as if, oh, because you have a car and he doesn't have a car. So that thing was a conscious effort. Normal me, I would have zoomed off oh. So I think as a woman, if you're watching this and you feel you fall into the category of being an alpha female, you need to sit up, you need to breeze up and now tell yourself, if I want to get married, I need to bring down my head for a man. That's the truth. Too. That's why most of us are still single. Not be saying man, not fully everywhere. Men do, but you go feed their ass. We are outside, we are outside. You go feed their ass. <laughs> Can you listen to the man? Can you put out your own opinion without coming off? You know, this lady said something that she always wants to be in charge. Do you know as a woman, you can actually be in charge and a man will not even know that you're in charge? A lot of women are in charge of their own, but you don't have to do it by shouting. You don't have to do it by whining. You can actually earn your husband's trust to the point that if your husband wants to make a decision, he will come and come and ask you. You don't have to shout. You can tell him, baby, mm, what you said is very good, though. Right, that building project. But instead of like, why don't why don't you do it like? That? I don't think men are mental. The way we always make them look, men are not mental. It's how you pass this message to them. And you know, as women, as wives, and as um, girlfriends, when we stay so much with a man, see finish when I enter inside. So we start to talk to our men anyhow. We don't see and finish. Whenever he brings anything, I beg, oh God, you don't have sense. This thing will not make sense. This business. The man might not say, but you've now made him go into his shell. That's why you see some men, they talk more to their secretary, to their receptionist. Yes, to their mom. If you see all this mommy's boy, it's because they have not found that thing they are looking for in a wife. They will always go back to their mom. Why? Their mom is that one that will have patience to listen to them, their nonsense. But you as a wife, you are in a hurry. Do you understand? And that's the challenges we have today in marriage. So I'm going to say... If you fall into the category of an alpha female, you need to go back to the drawing board, look at your childhood, look at your growing up, and ask yourself, what do I want? If you actually want to get married, then you have to throw some characters into the dustbin. You have to be able to unlearn and relearn. So the call lines are open. Feel free to call in if you want to contribute to the show. Call the number. And please, when you're calling, turn down the volume of your television. If you fall in the category of this alpha female and you want to ask any questions about yourself or you have an advice you want to give both as a man and as a woman, feel free to call and the number is right here on your screen. Before our call starts to come in, let me also tutor you how to bring out your feminism. Like I said, I'm also an alpha female. I'm that woman that has that masculine energy. Yes, I do have it. There is nothing a man can do I cannot do. I swear, the only thing I know if you have me said, I know if you give woman belly. <laughs> I love to drive men cars. You see all these big tundra, not the kind of car where they like. Anything a man does. I love to be in the midst of men. You know, when I was building my first house, I built it like a man. You know that kind of house that you build compound. Like people do not believe that it's a woman that builds. I do not build anything I want to do. It's like I'm in competition with men. You know, there's this subconscious, you know. And sometimes, okay, we have a caller. Hello. 
Yeah, hello. Good evening. Is that a, Good yeah, evening, sir. Is that Blessing CEO show? Yeah, this is Blessing CEO, sir. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. What I'm saying is that uh, I'm calling from a boy state. Okay. Yeah, my name is Emeka. Okay, sir. So I'm, I'm single, but I'm thinking I have a girlfriend that has this alpha, 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 alpha female uh, attitude. Okay. So how can I cope with such kind of girl? Okay. All you need to do is just be patient with her. Anytime she brings out the alpha, you can correct her because sometimes she does it subconsciously. It's not intentional. It's part of the growing mm -hmm. up trauma. You know, most times you don't even know where people are coming from. We just see them and we love them. So most times just tell her that, baby, you're beginning to shout. Baby, bring down your voice. Did you lose the caller? Okay. Okay. The, the caller made a very important. He said, how can he control? He has a, a, a lady that is an alpha female. That's the honest. Just be patient with them. If you love them enough. And if you're an alpha female, you have to be teachable. Yes. When your, your man says, this is, what, this is somebody that you stay with, this character is something that is, you begin to adjust. It was love that made me to start adjusting myself, adjusting myself, adjusting myself. I didn't used to be like this. I, I'm a buzz kind of person. I'm a quarrelsome person. Every time I'm looking for fights. And he's like, can't you talk? Must you shout? I'm like, if I don't shout, I don't think you can hear me. Every time I am shouting, I am screaming like a mad person. I must drive my point if I don't scream. I have to change. I didn't used to be like that too. It was trauma. It was growth. How did I become aggressive? It, it wasn't even from the media. Though. I think it was from my previous marriage. You know, my previous marriage, when I first got married, I got married very early. So I allowed my ex-husband bully me. You know, normally what a lot of couples have these days is fights. It's not even beating. Very rare before a man beat a woman. That's the truth. Every problem that used to come to my table is not beaten. It's fights. But the fact is the man might overpower the woman. Do you understand? Uh -huh. I think we have a caller. Hello. 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 Good we evening, sir. Yeah, this we is love blessed. your show. I'm Martin. We love your show. Thank you so much. God bless you, darling. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay, he just called to, you know, compliment. Thank you for saying you love my show. It's part of the ginger. God bless you. So I was talking about my, my growing up and what made me very hostile. When I got married as a young girl, I allowed... We have a caller. Hello? I was talking about my growing up. Hello? I think we lost a caller. Please, when you're trying to call, please turn down the volume of your television so that I can hear you. So before we get the other caller, like I said, my own trauma started from when I got married as a very young girl. I allowed my ex-husband bully me. In fact, till today, I used to say that if I, anywhere I meet my ex-husband, I will fight him. Because if I go back to memory lane, how can I go just sit down, man go drop belts, they flog me. I go, they beg. Jokes, this is blessing so you are seeing here. I've been through a lot though. So it made me so, that's why I knew that some men can just be animals. Because to the best of my knowledge, I never fought my ex. He was about 14 years older than me. I was literally, I never even, I don't even get body. There was no blessing CEO. I didn't even have money of my own. It was my ex that was buying down to sanitary pad. He was treating me like a child. And sometimes he would tie me in the ceiling. He would beat. People would be wondering, why was he beating like nothing? That was the way of him showing might that he's bigger than me. He will horn at the gate. I am not the gate man. If I don't jump out to come and open gates, he will park his car in front of the main gates, come in through the small gate and come and knock on the door and give me two slaps for being deaf and seize my phone for four days. Sometimes, you know, I still have trauma issues. I can just wake up sometimes and look at the man I'm dating from head to toe. It will be like I'd be going, <laughs> when I remember what I went through in the hands of a man. So a lot of us are bleeding on innocent people. This is the reality of relationship and marriage. 
the man is not that bad, though. But sometimes, you know, when we are dating, we do not talk about the major things. Once you see one fine boy, one fine, you will be knocking, oh, now so so fuck, 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 now go the fuck for the relationship tea. Maybe Bele can't enter. The guy can't say, oh, I don't the old. Make I just marry this girl. Oh, this girl fine. She'll give him better picking. Everybody have different reasons why they want to get married. A lot of people do not marry for love. This girl they lawyer. She go fit sit down for her. I go fit cheat on her. She go fit take her. There are some men that are married to you because they know that they can always oppress you. It's not because they love you. So this is how it starts and it continues from there. You start to bleed on somebody. Now, the things you're supposed to be talking about in a relationship, you did not say to. You did not tell the man where you're coming from. Oh. You did not tell him your trauma issues. Oh. Same as men. I have men who come to me for therapy and they were raped as kids. Yeah. There was a, a man that came to me and told me that when his mom gave birth to him, the mom lost um, her, the, the mom lost her husband. That means she, he lost his dad, and the mom was a banker. So whenever they closed from school, the mom would quickly come and pick him from school and beg one of her best friend to keep him in her boutique until she closes from work in the bank. She now comes and take him home. This her best friend started molesting her son. As of then, he said he was twelve years old, going thirteen years. Her best friend was molesting. And you know, as young kids, they did not even know what was going on. So you don't even know what to go and be telling your mother. And there's something about pedophiles people don't understand. When people are saying somebody molested you, some people will be like, why didn't you talk? Why didn't you talk? When people are molesting you, they don't come with beating. It's not rape. Pedophiles do not beat you. Pedophiles will lure you. They show you love. They buy you biscuits. That uncle that is in your compound. Uh, He's, oh, fine, yeah. You give you sweets. It starts with likeness. Your daughter begins to like the, the or, uncle naturally. Not that your daughter is wayward. So that's the reason why we need to educate our children. So uncle begins to touch her in a particular way because your child do not understand what sex education is. What does she know? Some of these people start to molest your kids that don't even have boobs. They have not started menstruating. The poor girl doesn't know what is happening. You know uncle that is buying me biscuits. So because I hear people say, why didn't she talk? Why didn't she shout? No, pedophiles come with love. That is the reason why they'll be sleeping. Most pedophiles are not strangers. They are your relatives. They are your friends. They are your neighbors. They are people around you. Strangers, that one is rape. There's a difference between rape. So that was what was happening to the guy. The guy said, what even now got him angry is the fact that when the woman got married and was about to relocate, she re transferred him to another of her friends that started molesting her. That started continuing molesting him. I told him, is that you never told your mom? Is it you today? He never told his mom. Luckily for him, he grew up, began to understand what sex was about, you know, got into the university, started reading books, and he just got to know that he was molested, you know, as a young child. And he said when these things was happening, it made him very, very quiet. He doesn't talk. And for me, I learned from that because when a child starts to go quiet from 11, 12, it's time to ask them questions. We have another caller. Hello. Hello, ma. How are you? Good evening, darling. I'm good evening, ma'am. I really love your show. Thank you so much. <laughs> Everybody's loving my show today. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. So, okay, like I was saying, I'll quickly run through what I was saying. I was talking about... Um, the young boy that was being molested. So what am I trying to say? I'm just trying to say there are some of us that have trauma issues. Trauma from our childhood. Some of us have daddy issues. Some of us have mommy issues. Come to the social media and see people that have mommy issues. These are the ones that are quick to call you a shower. Olo show. Olo. You will know that this person is coming from the slum. A well-trained child by the way they write. You can, you can be able to place. Don't blame them. All. Some of them are coming from the slums. Some of them don't know what is love. Go to come to Lagos, you see young children on the streets from five, six, seven, eight years, they're already begging. So, what do you expect? Most of those people are people that will grow to marry you, that went to university and went to Harvard. These are the men you will mingle up with. These boys on the street that are selling gala that you are passing. Your mother is picking you up from school, you are inside AC. You will meet them when you grow up. You will fall in love with them. Those are the narcissists. Because I noticed something. We, the ladies that are strong, we can, me, there was a day I even had to go to my pastor. I told him, sir, please, I would like to see you after this service. He said, okay. I told him, sir, please, I want to ask, did they swear for me? 
You say, what happened? I am always attracted to broken men. If you are not broken, you see these men that have smooth life, men that have money. What do you used to freak me and them? I'm very honest with you. There was a time, my friend, they didn't swear for you and hustling. Like, I've been opportune to have a baby girl life, fly around the world. You know this normal baby girl, you could just get sugar daddy. Nobody would say every baby they fight. I know the sugar, they don't have problems. Some of them even have. There was one man that ever told me that he has um, post-trace cancer. That means he will never do anything sexual. <laughs> but he just likes me. He just wants me to be around him. I don't agree. But me and broken men, that one where life don't tire, where they struggle, I say one die. I'm the lifter. I like to uplift. <laughs> I know the funniest part. <laughs> After lifting the idiots, <laughs> they will now come back to break you. And I know some women experience this. I am always attracted to broken men. I am a healer. So this 2025, I told myself, anything broken. <laughs> I will have to work on myself to the point that I don't want broken men again in my life. I want rich men in my life. So my point is, as a woman, whether you're an alpha female or whatever you call yourself, once you want to get into a relationship or marriage, you must double L. If you're not ready to double L for a man, my dear, you will be in this WhatsApp group. Even myself, I am the admin for this WhatsApp group of singlehood. I don't desire. Play, 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 go shock on Let's see you don't live in a marriage. You go shock. So you have to calm down though, so that you not say, oh, mama, you left us behind. So you need to calm down as a woman, whether you're alpha. Let your alpha be in your business. Let your CEO be in your workplace. As soon as you get into your relationship, your marriage, your family, you bring that down. You know, My father said, my father, my father was trying to call me blessed to see you or that. It was sounding very strange. <laughs> you know, I had to call me in Kiruka. I told him, mom, daddy, no, blessed to see you is for the media. So I'm going to tell the beautiful woman who sent a message that go back to the drawing board or you could actually come to our office. That is the essence of counseling. Let me now put you through, be able to bring out the feminine part of you. There's a feminine part of you that life has taken, hustle has taken. So you don't even remember that you're a lady. If we me, get it out why they, they fight for boss. You know, there was a conductor that said he's not going to give me a 15 hour change far back then. A whole conductor. I'm that kind of lady that I will come down from my car. You bash me, you don't say sorry. I will use my car and block you. I've done it so many times in Abuja. I will use my car, I will block you on the road. If you do anyhow, I will bring Jack. Hello? I think we have a caller. Hello? Hello? Okay, okay, I think we lost that caller. Please, when you're calling, turn down the volume of your TV. For me, I was that, I was that crazy to the point that there was this day, a guy, a, a, a man scratched me. I know there's this thing about men. Once it's a woman that is driving a woman, he wanted to pass. Without him stopping to say sorry, I overtook him and blocked him. Boy, I block him, Moto. I come down, I say, oh, God, you scratched my car. He said, this small scratch. That is why he wants to come and block the whole road. I said, oh, Google key you. So you're a very stupid man. Is that how you talk to your man? Inside, I didn't even talk. I just went to the boot of my car. Then I was not even driving. I was driving a pointer vibe. Pia! I brought Jack. Boy! On his wee screen. And I saw he text that now. You guys, da, 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 da. as he was talking, I went to the side mirror. Boy! I caused the scene now. Nobody was going out that day. Everywhere was blocked. That is the kind of worry that I have. And everybody kept telling me, you're a lady, you're a lady, calm down. I said, for what? But of course, I will go to see a cloth. I was going to walk that deal. I come on my shoe, come on wig. Go, 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 go punish you there. Who the, 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 yeah. You know, even when they finished settling the whole thing and I was driving to work, I was exhausted. I was panting. My heart was beating. And something just said, a cruel blessing. Sure, you know that this thing that happened now, hydraulic can clean it. And the truth was that the guy did not really bash me, but just a scratch. Yeah, but he did not come down to say, sorry, blessing you if I just pass. I said, I don't shout. He shouts me. He's better than I go do. <laughs> I actually felt bad that I caused more damage for the guy, but I had to now start learning how to ignore. So growing up now, if you bash my car, I don't come down to check what's wrong with the car. I just drive off. Maybe when I get to a quiet place, so long as the car did not, the ignition is still on. Maybe when I get to a quiet place, I will now come down and check and just call my mechanic and say they bash me. 
that is growth. Because at this level, I cannot come and see myself shouting, speaking. I don't have energy. And most of these people cannot afford to fix your car. So for me, it's growth. I've now learned to overlook some certain things. Before, if I'm in a relationship, any small thing, I want to shout. I want to prove a point. I want to prove, say, yes, I go unicam. My mama and papa send me go school. I go, they speak English. I go, they argue. Blessing, you don't do. Morning, I will argue. Afternoon, I will argue. With it. I was not acting like a lawyer in the relationship. The guy woke up one day and said, baby, I'm tired. <laughs> I said, ah. So because I tried to, for, for you to give me accountability, he said, there are so many ways you can say it. I am tired. He said that you want me to lay my hands on you. And I'm like, no. Now, <clears throat> I'm not sending the conversation the right way. I'm raising my voice. I'm shouting. Why am I using myself as an experience? I don't want to come and tell you because I'm one holy girl. I am an, I'm a pure alpha female. Even if you are following me on the media, you're going to say, like they're crazy, I know where. If you call, you go collect. <laughs> but over time, I had to start to unlearn and relearn that this thing doesn't make you powerful. Silence is power. Initially, I used to think that if I don't talk, if I don't argue, you are bullying me. Now, eh, I don't even have energy to study. I, I don't know why it comes with age. I'm 35. And at this point, anything that's not going to bring money or anything profitable to my pocket, I'm not even ready to, you know, get myself involved in it. Okay, get myself involved. So I'm going to tell every beautiful woman out there that is an alpha female. Alpha female are those women who have masculine energy inside of them. It doesn't mean you look like a man, but you have that masculine energy. You can do what a man can do. I'm going to say it's time for us to drop the masculine energy and start to work on our feminine energy. So we're going to be going on a break. So when we get back, I'm going to teach you how to find that feminine energy in you. Just the same way I found my own. It's in you. It's just that the masculinity is overpowering your feminism. So I'm going to catch you guys. Let's go on a break. I'll go drink tea. No, sorry. Soft drink. Juice. I'll be back to give you guys the juice. See you guys soon. Hi guys, welcome back. Sorry, I went on a short break. I went to take a bottle of juice and just to cool my temper down. So, for those of you who are just, just joining the show, because I know some of you are just tuning in, just enter your parlor, just enter your room. Now, this is Moment of Blessing See You. We talk about everything that happened behind closed doors. So, let me give you the story for those of you who don't know what we're talking about. We're talking about a beautiful lady who is 45 years old. She says she's an alpha female and it's been difficult for her to keep a relationship because of her attitude. She acts like a boss. She always wants to be in charge. So she ends up falling a victim with men that just come and, you know, gigolos, collect her money and run away. So she says she wants to settle down, but yet she wants to be in charge. So that's what we are talking about and trying to deliberate here. Even me too, I'm an alpha female. And a lot of women are alpha female. And like I said from the beginning, what's the meaning of being an alpha female? It simply means you have... Um, that's masculinity. You have that man's energy inside of you. And sometimes it comes from our growing up. Sometimes it comes from life. There were some young women that started carried responsibility right from when they were children. So that masculinity is inside of us. Trust me, eh? Many relationship, relationship I've been in, eh? When you, I used to, my boyfriend used to tell me that. It's just that me, I have worry. Funny enough, no guy has actually broken up with me. It's, I can just wake up one day and tell you I'm not doing it again. I don't know, my mama said I get wish. She should carry me, go wash my head. I get bored easily of relationship. So I myself, I'm an alpha female. I also, I'm also looking for an alpha male. The reason why I never marry now, because, see, I keep seeing men that are too calm. I don't like calm men. I don't like a man that will just say yes, baby, to everything. I like a man that will tell me, hello, baby, I'm going to the club. Don't move an inch. Stay in the house. That's the kind of man I'm looking for. I will not argue, argue. He will never answer me. I don't want that one. I said, baby, I'm going to the club. Okay, have fun. I said, this one is not even a man. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know what women want. But like I said, over time, I started working on myself and realizing that this thing I'm doing is toxic. This is toxicity. This is wickedness. How can you just, you say you love people and you every time is fight, 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 fight. So I had to now go back to the drawing board I said I wasn't going to date anybody for one year. I'm going to start by working on myself because I even extended it to most of my staff. I can wake up in the morning and when I get to the office and everything is not, I will be screaming like a mad goat. 
You don't have to shout. You can just call them and give them suspension instead of just screaming. So, like I said, silence is very powerful. Most of us think that if we are loud, we are overtaking the next person. Is it like you? I have been a loud person. If you guys notice, if you're my Kung follower and you're watching this, this program, you will notice something. I have calmed down. It's not like the grace is not there, but I told myself, oh, your blessing, tune it down. You're growing old. You need to have online. I can't be the same person. Go back to my videos. Go to my YouTube channel. Go and watch my videos from tw when I was two, three, four years ago. You will see the energy. I go call you, call your name, call your partner. It's going to make it happen. But now, as I began to grow, that thing that we call blunt. You know, a lot of you are saying, oh, I like this boy. This boy that just came out of Kiriki, this black boy. He says the truth. He says the truth. He's a truth sayer. Now, this truth that you people are saying that very dark man is saying and blunt, you like the way he's helping Nigeria and talking. If this truth come to your father now, he begin to drag your papa, you will not be happy again. You only enjoy the truth when it is another person. Now, I used to be this very dark man. And that's why sometimes people say, oh, bless him, leave him. I only tell him because he reminds me of me. You know, he was busy selling prick when we were doing controversy. So I'm like his elder sister, you know? Now we be um, OG for the game. What am I trying to say? You being blunt sometimes, it is being rude. That is just the honest truth. You always want to see someone and tell somebody. You look wayward. How can you be dressing like an ashawo? And I say you are being blunt. No. There are better ways you can pass this message. Because if they throw that thing back at you, you can take it. So I start to start, I, start, I, had to, I had to start unlearning it. How did I become controversial? How did I become so toxic that when people see me, they will say troublesome baby? Jokingly, yo, they say it jokingly, but I didn't like it. That was not what I was. I started going back to the drawing board. I started watching the way I was talking. Every time blessing is talking, as if I'm fighting with somebody, as if I'm arguing with somebody. I said, okay. It's as if I want to beat somebody. I had to go back to my drawing board and tell myself, blessing, it's time to bring out the feminine energy. I started to work on myself. If you notice this day, I don't even have energy to answer anybody. If you drag me, I will leave you. So we, do we have a caller? If you drag me these days, we have a caller. Hello? Hello? Okay, I think we lost the caller. So if you look at me very well, this year especially, most people come out and tell me, blessing, you don't have content. I have content, but I have grown now. I've done this for eight years. I've been controversial for eight years. I've been doing basketball for eight years. So it's time to grow up. I see a lot of things people write about me on Facebook. I will pass. You know, not like, I even prefer to have... Hello? We have a caller. I think we, we lost a caller. I prefer, at this stage of my life, eh, I prefer to have... 10 sane comments than have 1,200 idiots on my comment session. That's the honest truth. I go to Rita Dominic's page. It's not every time that Rita Dominic have comments like seven. Rita Dominic have almost, almost 9 million followers. Sometimes you just see 200 like, 200 um, comments. But they are sane people. No, I'm not, I don't want to place comment again. People say, oh, you have one. It's not the one point. All the 1.1 million followers follow you are not all your lovers. So them are waiting for you to just say one thing, make one mistake, they'll just screen record you. So I've gotten to a place whereby I don't need crowd. I need people. Like as you're watching me right now, I need people that can sit down, listen to blessing. You know, it's a difference between listening to me and hearing me. Some people hear you just to look for something to talk. And you know, these days, all this Facebook money, all these hungry bloggers. So they are waiting for you to say one thing that they will use and fly. Uh -huh. So I respect those who listen, who pay attention to me, than people that just hear me. So that's how I got here, and that's the reason why I appreciate the show, and I want to give it my best. I don't even want it to, I don't want anything, I want us to be able to sit down, learn, talk about relationship. In fact, this show, you know, when it all came out, I was so excited because I said this is an opportunity to bring out that intellectual part of blessing. 
I think people have known me for controversy so much and noise and buzz bows. The intellectual side of me has been, you know, broad. So this was an opportunity for me to come and speak out that intellectual side of me. And I'm very grateful. And I'm very honored to those of you who still trust me enough with your story, with your life story, who still come to me for counseling. And who still share your story and tell me, okay, blessing, I want you to share it on the show. So I said I'm going to teach you how to bring the feminism inside of you before we start to get the call. Number one, how to know that you have a masculine energy, the way you talk. You're going to have bamba, always shouting. Hey, yo, whoa, whoa. Your voice will move from zero to hundred. And you're always shouting for nothing. Till it doesn't make any sense. You'll be screaming. You have masculine energy. So you now have to start walking on your tone. You become unnecessarily authoritative. Things you're supposed to just calm down and just, you know, think about. Bah! You're always there in a hurry to make decisions. Those people that are always in a hurry to make a decision is men. That's the reason why a man always needs a woman. When a man is in a hurry to make a decision, the woman will be telling him, baby, calm down. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are the alpha male, you're always in a hurry to make a decision. How do you not want to handle a man? See? Men are the ones that are supposed to be, ah, I saw this investment. People are telling him, baby, check who, scam as who. You understand? Uh -huh. And you see that my father will even always tell me that he would have been useless today without my mom. He used to say it. I will tell him that he had. He said he knew how to make money, but his weakness was how to invest it. So my mom is that kind of person that can be gathering 20 naira, 30 naira, 40 naira, 50 naira. Before you know, is in millions. So they always have a misunderstanding. Whenever my father has money, the next thing my father likes Angoroma, he'll go and buy her shoe. That's not what my mom wanted. My mom knew where she was coming from because she said she married my dad and my dad was from a very poor home. That's not what she wanted. She wanted him to give him, you know, a better... So my father said he got to a point where he had to accept that it was a weakness, that he was not good in investing. And that's what I also want to teach a lot of men here. When you want to get married, you don't get married to someone that is like you. You get married to your opposite. Yes, because there are some of you that are married mad people. The both of you are mad. Mental. When a man is talking, the woman is supposed to be quiet. When the woman is talking, one person should just shut up. It is when the two of them, that's what used to cause the blow and the buzz boost. So my father said he acknowledged the fact that he was not a good investor. So what does he do? If he should make like five million, he would divide it into three, give my mom, let's say three million, and hold two million as a man. So that was how my father was even able to build a house. In fact, my father built a house for seven years, and he did not finish it. <laughs> Why? What happened? He gave you in this house because he was, as a man, now see what happened to my dad. And that's what I want to teach a lot of men now on the show. The money was there. My father would go and buy Italian tiles and fill up the whole house. He would buy cement. He bought everything that needed to be done. He would now go out and now travel and now leave it for workers. By the time he goes and comes, by the time that Oga tie no rich. Ah, ah, cement not finished. Ah, what were these workers doing? They saw that my father was a careless person. As my father is going, they are selling his, they are selling his materials. So he now made my father very tired because he bought tiles more than 10 times. So as in laziness, can't enter the thing. So one day my mom now asked him, what's up with this house you're building? He said, I is tired. My mom said, okay, gather the money, give it to me. It took my mom six months to raise that house that my father could not raise in seven years. So as a woman, that's what makes you a feminine. That's, those are part of the feminine energy. And that's what makes your husband come home to you. That's why it looks as if some women use juju hold their husband. Not be juju. Apart from the normal fork, where will not they fork? I've told you in marriage, you're not going to fork. It is responsibility, children, family relation. Knock is the least thing on your mind. That's why if you have money once in a while, you and your wife will just go for vacation. Because you can stay with your husband one month. So I never remember fork. You they plan, you want to wake up at 5 a.m. and carry picking, they go to school. Now, person won't come, come touch. Because these days, everybody's walking, even abroad. Abroad, people switch. Forget all these things you're seeing on the internet. Too. It's even worse abroad. In Nigeria, here, we can always get house girl. Get, and we can pay. Them. Abroad, it's very expensive to pay nannies. You will see couples switch. You know, someone will go to work to this one, go to work tomorrow. So, marriage is not where you're going to knock. That's not where they go. So, if you want to fornicate, fornicate now. Once you get into marriage, it is responsibility. It is brain work. You talk more than you fuck in marriage. 24 hours, people have to be talking. And that is what is called understanding. When people say, marry your best friend. 
What does it mean? Marry someone you can just, someone you can communicate with. Baby, let's do it like this. So. Because teamwork, when you and your wife is working hand in hand, she has sense, you have sense. Two people will get sense, come put their sense together. What do you think is going to happen? That's magic. But when the two of you don't have sense, or when a woman is bringing out that masculine energy, because a lot of men get aggressive. When you want to come and you shout, it's not my money, but it's how you can pamper a man. Hmm. Men are babies, though. Men are babies. It's except a man does not like you. And that's why I always tell women, it is so easy for you to know that a man does not like you. Men do not know how to hide that energy. But women, we can be playing four people at the same time, but when a man doesn't like you, you don't know. So I'm going to say, women, let's bring down the tune of our voice. If you want to talk to your husband or to your boyfriend, I feel you should know him better enough to know when he's in the right mood. Maybe after a football, when in team, don't we? Maybe when in team, lose. You know, maybe when he's playing his favorite video game, I feel you should be able to know your man's strengths and weaknesses. You can bring some certain topic. Not be, even your father self, growing up, it's not everything you just carry and go and meet your father. This is how you see your father's face. You will hold out your school fees for now. You know, so I think that's where we lose it. And this whole feminism and alpha female is making a lot of us, you know, go gaga. So feel free to call the number right on your screen if you want to contribute, if you want to share what you think, or if you are an alpha female. Hello. Hello. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, blessing. Good evening, darling. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah. This is Grace calling from Cardinal. Okay. You want to contribute to the show? Yeah. Go ahead. Wow, I'm so glad to hear from you. It's been a while. <laughs> okay. In fact, I'm happy to see the new you, and I like the. In fact, I'm vibing with what you're discussing this evening. Wow, I'm so glad to hear from you. All right. Yeah, let's keep it up. All right. I love, I love your new you. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much for the compliment. She says she loves my new me. God bless you, darling. You know, it's always sweet when a woman actually compliments a woman. It gives us this extra energy. So feel free to call the number right on your screen if you want to contribute to the show or you have questions you want to ask. If you're a man that also have a woman that have this, you know, masculine energy, feel free. We can talk about it. Hello. 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 Please, when you're calling, darlings, please turn down the volume of your television so that it doesn't echo. When you call and the volume of your TV is high, we will not be able to hear what you're saying. So feel free to turn down the volume of the television. So we are still talking about alpha female. Alpha female. Hello. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Good evening. What do you mean? I want to talk to... <laughs> How are oh. you? What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling... Okay. <laughs> Please, when you're calling, turn down the volume of your TV. We want to take more calls. We want to hear your opinions. When you're calling, turn down the volume of your TV. If you don't turn down the volume of your TV, it will be echoing, so I wouldn't be able to hear you. So feel free to call the number right on your screen. We are talking about women who have alpha the alpha females. We have a caller. Hello. <coughs> Hello. Good evening. Hello. I think we lost the call again. Please, when you're calling, turn on the volume of your TV. I want to get to hear your opinion. I want to hear the alpha females. <coughs> I also want to hear from the alpha males. <coughs> you know we also have alpha males. Okay, good. Alpha males are those that can take authority. They call them Odogu. <laughs> yeah. Odogu, they don't bend. <laughs> their yes is yes and their no is no. <laughs> so we have another caller. Hello? Hello, good evening. Good evening, darling. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Flora. I'm calling from Lakers. I want to ask a question. You look Go good ahead. anyway. Um, how do you know a man doesn't uh, love you? You, you said? How do you, know, how do you know a man doesn't love you? You know, we have a lot of um, sweet-talking guys out there. So how do you know a man doesn't love you? 
Okay, how do you know a man doesn't love you? That's the question, yeah. right? Yeah, and how do you know a man really loves you? Okay, his action will speak. Men don't pretend. The difference is that, <clears throat> okay, the lady asked a very vital question. I'll quickly answer it before we take the next call. She said, how do you know a man doesn't love you? Now, as a woman and the beautiful woman that called, her voice was so sexy, so she, I'm sure she'll be very pretty. You know a man doesn't love you. You only pretend that you don't know. Once a woman likes a man, we play blind eye. It is always obvious. Men do not pretend. Yes, they can sweet talk you. A man can be sweet talking you and you know what he's saying is a lie. It's called beautiful nonsense. Even Simi sang it. She said, lie to me. If the truth will break my heart, though. Some of you women don't like truth. Once a man tells you the truth, you'll be wrong. You don't like truth, you like lie. You put like sweet nonsense. So a man will tell you, <clears throat> I can take the truth. Lie. Lie. Let a man come and tell you of a truth, so um, I have seven baby mamas, so. Some of you sit at him, he's a lie, you're teasing me. Men don't hide themselves. All I always tell women, once this love is shocking you, and you know one thing about us is once our biological clock start to tick, we start to get to our 40s, we don't have full sight again. Our eye is blind. Any man we are in love, just to be able to fulfill that biological clock. So I'm going to say, when a man doesn't love you, you know. The difference is that you don't want to pay attention because at that point, you are in love. <clears throat> you want to marry. You want to enter a man's house. That's the honest truth. So it's always very obvious. Men don't hide. It is women that can actually hide emotion. That's why a woman can hide paternity of a child. Until the child gets to 20 years before you know. <laughs> woman can hide DNA. So it's not hidden. Just pay attention. The red flags are always there. Men do not know how to pretend that much. Even gigolos, you know when a man wants you for your money. But because you have the money at that point in time, you'll be giving it to him and making excuses. You know, one thing about we women is that once we love people, we make excuses for him. The reason why I did not pick my car is because it's in a meeting. It is always so glaring. A man that does not love you will never give you his time. He will never give you his energy. He always have one excuse in the office. It's a lie. I have seen people that are busy that are sneaking to the door and say, baby, I just called to say I love you. What are you saying? And you refuse to notice it because you are desperate. So it's always very glaring, my darling. So there is no way you know a man doesn't love you. In fact, the number one way to know is that he can never give you his time. He's always complaining. Baby, I'll call you back because I'm in a meeting. He will never call back. You'll be seeing your boyfriend online. He'll be forming busy. Any man that always acts as if he's too busy, he doesn't love you. Ah. I've worked with busy people. Even Tinubu, the president, has time to speak to his family members. In every job, there is always break. During the break hours, uncle, he doesn't use to pick his phone to call you. And as a woman, you should know your boyfriend should do what he does for a living, to know sometimes your, some, some people are sailors, depending on their job schedule. You know when to call your man. Not to come and tell me that. You know. It's just desperation that makes us play blind eyes. So just pay attention to that man that is always giving you nonsense, flimsy excuses. Maybe I am shitting. I want to. I'll pick call you later. Maybe I am pissing. I'll call. But you know, when you are in love, you be cooking self. You be, you be turning soup. You be laughing. You don't even know when the, you put excess salt inside the soup. So it's always very, very glaring. So I'm going to say, don't play blind eye. Shine your eye. Wear eyeglass. They say love is blind, but marriage will open your eyes. There is nothing a man shows you in marriage that he did not show you in your relationship. The difference is in relationship, you did as if you did not see them in marriage. You now it's going to be disturbing us. That is just the difference. Every attribute. The people that I can say pretend the most is even women. Women, we can pretend. Surely when our, our biological clock is ticking, we can pretend to be nice. Yeah, good girls. We are very good at it. You don't see we are shower they claim scent. You're not going to say freak out at other place. So. <laughs> she go revenging herself. We have a caller. Hello. 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 Okay, I think we lost that caller. So a woman can go that far. We have another caller. Hello. Hello. Hi, good evening. Hi. How are you? Hi, good evening. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Norbert. I'm calling from Vidasi. Okay, you want to contribute to the show? Thank you so much. God bless you. I'm really learning a lot from the show. 
Thank you so much, Joe. I love you too. God bless you, my darling. Bless you too. I love your outfit. You look beautiful. You want to do what? I love your outfit. You look beautiful. Thank you so much, darling. God Bye. bless you. <laughs> oh, you guys are making me blush today. Oh. Please, today should be like every day. I'm not going to remove this cloth today. I'm not removing this cloth today. Thank you so much. We're, we actually want, I want to get more callers. I want to get your opinion. You guys are just admiring me and saying, I want to get your opinions. I want to get your insight. Because a lot of men would have come across these women called alpha females. Women like us. Masculine women like us. So if you have any questions, you feel, um, you know, there are some questions you cannot ask you. We have a caller. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. What's your name and where are you calling from? I am a woman from Ikorodo. Okay, ma'am. You want to contribute to the show? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, you know, I've been hearing about best people, you know. I didn't know you are this intelligent. Oh, really? So, I I know you are somebody that is uh, controversial. They're always talking about you in a bad way, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, I, I think you talk about watching your program, and I'm learning a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, my dad. Let's keep it up, eh? All right, mom. God bless you. Uh, Thank God bless you. you. God bless uh, you too. Thanks, darling. Care. All right, darling. Oh, uh -uh. she said she loves the show. God bless you. You see, I'm not that notorious. The way they are painting me. Ah, let us have so far. Let us have so far. You see how God is using Pop Central to vindicate me. <laughs> Pop Central said, "Bring. We want the intellectual part of you." Enough. Let's see your intelligence. We don't like all this nonsense I do with you on the media. Come. And now, you see? Thanks to Pop Central. Thanks to DSTV. God bless you guys for giving me the opportunity to showcase this part of me. So we're still talking about the show and talking about the alpha female. Thank you so much for calling in to so appreciate the show. It's a whole lot for me. And um, before we go on a quick break, I'm going to tell every beautiful woman that is watching the show and every handsome man that is watching the show. Now, if you're married, I want you to go to your wife or go to your husband and start to ask them questions. Know about their childhood. They are the way they are because of some certain things that have happened to them that they've never spoken about. If you are in a relationship, start to ask people about their trauma because if you don't do that, they will bleed on you. Do you know that you are a very good man? You're a very wonderful man. But a woman made you a monster. Do you know you're a very wonderful woman? You were a virgin. You know, be a shower. You know, they walk up and down. Oh, you be good girl. Oh. They know born you, open your toto. Now, nah, man. Now, nah, make you say, okay. Since I gave you my oil, oh, I like this. We move. It catch a high bridge. We stand there. It's a trauma. We need help. And sometimes we need to talk about it. I know a lot of people do not understand what therapist is here right now, but sometimes. I think you need to talk about it to someone, share it with your spouses. You know, this is what I've been through. I have a chump who have a lot of childhood trauma. It's going to help you not to bleed on the next person because I used to tell people before we quickly go that, do you know I have only dated up to five men in my life? Some people say they lie. Plus, the man I married you, so let's say for dates. You understand? I'm not a kind of woman. I'm not even trying to play sense here. I'm not, I'm not a kind of woman that sleep around. Why? Because I always ask people when they come for therapy, how do you cope? Because me, if I leave a relationship, do you know what I do? And do you know how it's supposed to be? When you've been in a relationship for a year, two, three, or some months, you have picked up some certain behaviors. You have learned something from your boyfriend or from your girlfriend. When you are leaving the relationship, you're supposed to detox your system. I've been divorced for more than, for more than 10 years, for more than 11 years. And I'm not, I've not remarried. My ex have remarried. He has three children. Me, I want to be the best wife I could be to the next man I'm going to get married to. Because I got married as a child. I got married as an 18-year-old girl and divorced as 21. Now I'm an adult. I don't have any blame. So any man I'm going to get married to, Oga, it's for better for us. You go nowhere, I go nowhere. So I'm going to say, let's talk about the major things. A lot of us are coming from broken homes. We have trauma issues and we are bleeding on you. We have lots of wonderful men that have been through 
wicked and miserable women. Don't blame the women, no. They're also coming from somewhere. So until we come back on this break, it's still moments with Bless and See You. So keep your questions rolling and also keep your contributions rolling. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Hi guys, welcome back to Moments with Blessing CEO. Sorry, we went on a break and we're back. I'm quickly going to give you guys a recap of what the show is about. It's about everything that happens behind closed doors. When you come and say your truth, all those emotional buhas you don't understand. A lot of things are not spiritual, they're emotional. Yes, this is what we do for a living. Spiritual, your pastor, emotion, come to blessing. Tune into Pop Central every 10 p.m. every day. Moments with blessing see you and share your emotional issues. We're actually talking about a 45-year-old woman who is not married, but she says she's an alpha female, and the problem she has is the fact that she likes to take charge in all her relationships. So this man just come. She has money. Definitely, for you to be an alpha female, you have money. But are you alpha if there's no money? So this man just come and take this money from her, and she goes away. So she's saying... She wants to get married. She's 45. She needs to have children. How can she keep a man, right, and still be in charge? So we are trying to tutor her that for her to be in charge. That means that she wants to marry herself. You understand? There are some women these days actually marry men, no? Because we know we have gigolos. But the fact is, when you marry these men, you empower them. Once they get money, they will dump you. I don't think any man, even in this dear gay world, they see I have man and they see I have woman. Somebody must take up the mantle. Not the more of when we can differentiate. In the gay world, they are both men. Anybody can choose to say, okay, maybe this one, I want to be the man. Anybody can choose. But when there's a man and there's a woman, men are supposed to take the mantle. They are the head. So if you know you're a billionaire, only a G-cash, shopping and spending the cash, there is no mercy for them. They remain single. After all, even me, I'm the admin of the WhatsApp group of singlehood. I feel shocked now because these days I have dropped alpha female for you people. I am open. In fact, if I want to serve my boyfriend, I used to need them and serve him. I greet him in the morning. I'll call him in the morning. <laughs> there was something I did. <laughs> One day, let me even teach you ladies that. I called my man in the morning by 5 p.m. I told him, hi, good morning. He was just sounding drowsy. He said, good morning. Baby, close your eye. Let us pray. He said, eh? <laughs> I said, close your eye, let us pray. <laughs> let me switch to a video call. I switched to video call. I knelt down. <laughs> and I prayed. And that was how it started. He was so excited. Trust me, eh? men love godly women. No? Jokes apart, not touchy women. Know the difference. Godly women. Like, there is this thing that is like when you say you have a prayerful mom. Now your mama prayer and I need to work for your head. When you combine your mama prayer, come combine your wife or girlfriend prayer, join. You are covered. Because every time these men go out, you don't know what they see. And in the real aspect of it, if we want to be honest to ourselves, it's easier for a woman to make it more than a man. That door we go, man go struggle to open. Once we match, they go open the door for us. So yes, your man needs that prayer. It gives him that reassurance that you have him at the back of his mind. What is the meaning of prayer? Prayer is that thought that is in your heart that you bring forth and speak out. That's prayer. That's why the Bible said, God knows you even before you were born, even your name. But he said, ask me and I will give you. Bring that, th that thing you are thinking, say it out. I will give it to you. So that's the sense of prayer. That's another one magical way to show your feminism. Trust me. Any man you pray for, eh? It is very hard for that man to leave you. And if you're a smart woman, you now share the same pastor. Otilo. Otilo. You know why? You guys are going to be sharing the same doctrine, the same mentality. It's like culture. A lot of people say in those days that in those days that marriage used to work. Now marriage is then because there was culture. This neighborhood you marry from this neighborhood, best friend you marry from this. So even if there's a misunderstanding, the family always put it together. It wasn't as if, but now. You want to go and fall in love with him, Togo man. You bring him to Igbo land. He doesn't understand your dialect. If you're speaking to your mom in your dialect, Togo man thinks that you're insulting him or you want to come and kidnap him. So these are the things we have to unlearn and relearn, you know, as females, as femi feminines. And these are the things I had to learn. It was hard for me. First of all, I had to work on my anger issues. I can get angry very easily. It was so easy for me to throw a bottle. 
Hmm. You see why they fight? I be like doubt. <laughs> portable. If I'm if you make portable. <laughs> I thought the people asked me, did I grow in a jigule? No. What was making me aggressive was the fact that I was fighting all the fights I did not fight in my marriage. I'm not going to lie. For five years, I was toxic. Very toxic. Until I told myself, it's time to just take a break. Take a break, take a break, take a break. Because I just feel that every man that comes into my life wants to become my ex. I needed to go back to the drawing board and heal. I took a break from relationship. I noticed that when you say you don't want to do relationship, you go begin come. I didn't, I didn't date for a year and. I had friends, but no dating. I needed to go detox my system on learn and relearn that, okay, maybe I got married very early. What went wrong? I had to forgive myself. I had to forgive my ex. I had to just say, tell myself he wasn't a bad man. Maybe he was just a man. That, had, that was what his parents taught him. Because a lot of people or men, they, some people are not well-traveled. Some men are not smart enough to read books and learn beyond what they know. Some men are just stuck with what their mother told them and what their father told them. That's what they're using on you. That's the truth. So if you're lucky enough to see a man that is exposed, that can even listen to you, that is willing to learn, like I used to tell couples when I go for couple seminar, first thing, you will look out for a man, as a woman and as a man. Look for people who are teachable. Don't marry as you know. People who are teachable, that is marriage. Marriage is not an conk man that feels as if he knows everything. Nobody knows anything. Once you marry people who are teachable, then marriage becomes easy. Baby, this thing you did to me, I didn't like it. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. How do I make it better? Some people, what has scattered marriage is just an ordinary sorry. Woman is raging soda up. Man is raging soda up. The day I actually, you know, apologized to my boyfriend, he was, it was weird. He said, so you could go on your knees. I said, why? I'm a lady. And he was blushing. He said, I wish I could video you and put on the internet. <laughs> I'm like, I have to learn about me in those days. Instead of me to say sorry, the relationship should just go. Sorry, get out. Instead of you say that sorry. And a lot of you women are like that. So that's a masculine energy. You're a woman. Even sometimes when you're not at fault, you just say, okay, baby, I'm sorry. I don't know what went wrong. Let's, can we talk about it? Can we make it work? That's a feminine energy. Not when your boyfriend throw face here, you throw face here. Then I don't think you want to marry. Marriage, you always go on your knees. That's the truth, though. Even my mom that is farming Jagabati today, she still, when she offends my dad, I still see that. I'm like, ah. They still quarrel, they still fight, but you could still see that she still goes back to her husband. Hey, my mom is still married, but I've been divorced. I didn't even stay up to one year in the marriage. I, like, I can't even back and I ran. So there were so many things probably as a young girl I didn't know and I've learned that right now and I think I'm going to do better. So this thing we call alpha female, alpha female, it's a toxic energy. It's just that we just find a way to define our bad habits. So if you're in this group of alpha female, my darling, your alpha feminism should come out in your work when you're a boss, when you're running an organization, good. Bring out that alpha female. Because sometimes people don't see that bossy nature in you. If you get to the bank, you are the MD of a bank, bring out the alpha female. Yes, those are the people, that is where it is needed. As soon as you're leaving your workplace, you're no more an alpha female. You're now a mom. You're now a wife. You're now a girlfriend. You will drop it at the door. The way you come back from work and take off your work clothes, and go and bait and wear your nightie. <laughs> That's the way you will drop it at the door. Now, an intelligent woman is a woman that knows when to switch roles. That's the power God gave to us. The ability to multitask. We'll be switching roles. Yes, that's why we are more powerful than men. When we say this, a lot of men think that it's about might. No, power simply means we have the ability to multitask. We have the ability to switch. We have the ability to, in the morning you see us, we are looking like mad people, we are going for school run. In the next one hour, we have switched in our suit and makeup and wig. We are in the office. Two o'clock, we are back to picking our children from school with bedroom slippers. We are coming back with our shoes. That is the energy that God has given to us. That's why no matter how any man wants to cry, you need a woman in your life. Either a mother figure, a wife figure, a girlfriend figure, but women, we are powerful. So I'm going to say, let's embrace that feminine energy inside of us. Leave men to carry their masculine energy and go. Men will always be men. 
You understand? And it's always sweet when you even allow him. And sometimes, eh, the sweetest... Do you know right now, at this level and at this stage, I'm looking for a man that is going to boss me around. It sounds very funny, yes. I used to be that person that would say, me, me, me. Yes. But at this point, you know, I think this thing comes with age. I can't remember when last a man told me, sit down. You, you did mad. But now that's, I'm looking for that man that will have that God to say, in Kiru, sit down here. There's only my father that can say that and my mom. Right now, so please. <laughs> if you want to date me, I love alpha males. <laughs> I love a man that can take, I like men that take charge. Don't pamper me, oh. I'm not very good at pampering. If you pamper me, you will spoil me. So I like a man that can, not like you're going to be toxic, but you should be able to know what you want. Stop, baby, I don't want this. Baby, let's talk about this, baby, you know? I should be able to come to you and say, okay, baby, please, this is the reason why I want to go for this show. And you're able to say, okay, see why I don't want you to go. See why, okay, baby, where you can go. So that is how it should be. So... The number is still on the screen for you to call if you have any questions, if you want to contribute to the show before we round up, feel free to call the number right on your screen and tell us what you think. If you're an alpha female, you think you're an alpha female, or you have questions about being an alpha female, please call in. Hello? Hello? Hello. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? What's your name and where are you calling from? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. What's your name? Or where are you call from? Uh, I'm Grace Girl, calling from Delta State. Okay, you want to contribute to the show? Oh, yes, I just want to tell you I love you so much. Love you too, darling. You look so beautiful, so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. Okay, okay. Bless you, sir. Good night. All right, darling. Good night. Oh, oh. They really missed me. Like. <laughs> I'm going to be wearing yellow all the time when I'm coming. Aww. If you're so sweet when a woman tells you that you look beautiful, right? So you guys should say that often, more often. Mm. I'm not even wearing makeup, but I just came as God created me. So, before we round up the show, I want to give you guys a take home. And the take home I'm going to give you guys is to the women. I don't want to talk to the men today. I want to talk to the beautiful women. Especially people who look up to me. No matter how I want to pretend, I have become a role model, I have become a public figure. People look up to me, my character, and that's why I said. I unlearned some certain things because I realized that some people didn't understand that it was media. People were now picking the toxic part of blessing. See you. Now, this is me saying, I used to be toxic. I used to have that masculine energy. I used to be an alpha female in quotes. But it, was, it wasn't a good energy. It was a bad energy. It was a bad energy. I lost a lot of beautiful things in my life just because I wanted to put my hands up. It not carry me go anywhere. It not carry me go anywhere. So as a woman, I'm going to tell you, bring out that feminine energy. Learn to talk very softly. Me, I didn't used to before. Before we make a point, I must shout the whole room down. And I'm, so that is how all of us, my mother is a shouter. Eh? Story. So I had to work on myself. Learn how to talk. Learn how to be silent. Learn how to smile. If you see me in public, you say I pretend. I don't used to talk. I was just smiling. Yeah, blessing is it. So most times in public, people love me more <laughs> because I don't talk. Talk when it's necessary. And before I go, I'm going to tell you, the greatest power you have as a woman is your silence. What did I say? The greatest power you have as a woman is your silence. Any woman that do... Become predictable. The respect your husband get for you, you go lose up. You get sometimes when your husband talk for you, you say, "Okay, I love you." You hug him and go and sleep. You don't have any contribution, nothing to say. Because at that point, you know that you are upset. You might say something that can trigger an argument that will last long. What do you do? Zip your mouth up and go and sleep. Give it two to three, four days. It's hard though, but you have to work. That's what makes you a woman. If you're a woman and you are not patient, you're not a woman. You're an animal. Or you want to be a man. So you need to be that calm one. Your husband cannot be talking and you'll be talking. Men are not stupid. Though. Men are not stupid. That's the reason why they will leave that side chick. I'm going to marry one woman. He'll be saying, uh -uh. I thought his wife is supposed to be. Now character. Oh. Men are not stupid. Though. If they're not looking at beauty, they're looking at a the woman that can stay at home. At least when I talk, someone that will listen to me. 
Not the one when I talk A, she will not remember that her father sent her to law school in Igunedium, that she went to Harvard University. Men don't like such. Yes. So I'm going to say your silence, it's your power. I love you guys, and I'm going to see you guys next time. Same time, 10 p.m., same station, same everything. It's for when to bless and see you. So tell a friend to tell a friend that the show is very educated. So bring up your stories. You can send me a DM. You can send me a WhatsApp message. You can reach me via my email and send your stories. Let's talk about everything that happens behind closed doors. Relationship and marriage is work. We continue to unlearn, relearn, unlearn, and relearn. And we'll keep doing it till the day we die. The day you stop learning is the day you enter six feet under the ground. So we can learn every day. I love you guys and I'm going to see you guys next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Mwah!